after she was launched, she was the first purpose-built marine ambulance in the world. And she's carried out more than a thousand life-saving rescues. The one they all remember around here took place in 1993, when Guernsey played host to the British round of the World Powerboat Championships. An exciting but potentially dangerous event. We've used stuntmen and actors, as well as the actual footage of the races themselves, to reconstruct what happened. But all the crew of the Flying Christine are those who actually provided the emergency medical help that was to prove so vital that day. For a whole week, Guernsey was powerboat crazy. Thousands of spectators from all over the world came to watch 28 boats compete, each of them worth more than a million pounds. But behind the carnival atmosphere, there was serious competition and hidden danger. The Channel Island seas would be a severe test for teams from Europe, the Middle East and America. I like Guernsey. The Italian champion, Francesco Panzini, had high hopes for his new boat. His teammate was Floriano Omoboni. We do it because uh, I like the, the speed. So the, off the power boat is, uh, is uh, speed and sea together. So it's really exciting. The day before the main race, during the speed trials and practice sessions, Panzini and Omoboni had hit the headlines. The trip to Guernsey started off badly for the Kojima Itiko when a navigational error led to the boat being grounded on rocks outside St. Peter Port Harbour. They weren't hurt, but it did make them wonder if they knew the waters well enough. I now think it was a premonition, a warning, but uh, at least the boat itself, it wasn't damaged. After inspection, the Kojima was put back in the water ready for the main race. It was so new, it still had teething troubles. On the Sunday morning before the race, we tried to close the cockpit. The bolt was really hard to close the cockpit. I don't know how, how but you know, that moment you don't care about that. Just uh, you have to think about the race. The Flying Christine went to one of the turning points, a known danger spot on the course. If she was in the right place, she could still respond quickly, despite her age. The Flying Christine is now 30 years old, and she's saved countless number of lives. You get a little sort of a little space in your heart, if you like, for a boat like that. She's old and she's wooden, but she's got a bit of character. The coxswain, Dave Wellborn, normally drives a road ambulance. Like the rest of his crew, he's a regular ambulance man, but with the extra skills to run Flying Christine. We've got a very skilled coxswain on board. During the race, we had a doctor, a nurse, a paramedic, a mechanic in case the vessel broke down, two divers on board, and we worked together very well as a team. I'm normally a consultant surgeon in the uh, local hospital and uh, just involved in powerboating for uh, one week of the year. Powerboating is dangerous and uh, accidents, although fortunately rare, can be quite serious. <laughs> The boat's plane at more than 120 miles an hour, and the Italians, with engines producing nearly 2,000 horsepower, got off to a flying start. We were uh, very tense at the start of the race because we had very little time to check the boat for faults. At these speeds, the slightest misjudgment could be fatal. We were very excited because uh, the boat is really, really fast. At the first boy, we was in the fourth, fifth position behind the, the Arab boat. Uh, and uh, so I said to Francesco, we are in good position, we can make uh, a good, uh, a good uh, competition. Driving hard, the Kojima faced a dangerous turn at the next boy. The boy was in the right, so we, we was turning on the right. And then we made uh, some mistake. The boat tipped up and we were sinking fast. I knew I had to struggle free from my safety belt. Spectators videoing the crash were horrified at the speed it was sinking. It's going down, for Christ's sake. You ready, boys?
A Navy helicopter was patrolling the race, and the flying Christine was motoring at full speed, but had to steer through the armada of spectators. Once we saw the boat with its bows up in the air, it took us just over a minute to get to its location. When we got there, there was already boats trying to get alongside it, which we realised was dangerous because at any moment the crew from the boat could have come out of the water. It was in the race line, of course, so there were several powerboats coming down towards us at fairly high speed, so it wasn't very easy. Then we realised that the crewmen who should have been surfaced by now from the boat, in fact, weren't there. We tried to, to open the cockpit, but it was really, really, really hard. The level of water really grew, growing up. I said, because we need the oxygen, so I bring the oxygen. They had one emergency mask between them. I couldn't use the oxygen mask uh, my teammate had found. We kept snatching it from each other, and I swallowed a lot of water. I just wasn't able to hold my breath any longer, and I passed out. When I didn't come out, we obviously realized that it was quite serious. And virtually as we stopped, the divers were deployed into the water. I made my way down towards the cockpit. And as I approached, I could see the throttle man trying to fight his way upwards. Uh, Mr. Pansini was looking at me through the glass of the cockpit. His mouth was wide open. His eyes were out on the stalks. And uh, he was completely motionless. Once your lungs are filled with water, you become unconscious within 20 seconds and uh, within three minutes you'll die. The situation was desperate, really, and, and we only had one or two minutes in which to get them out. They were already sinking rapidly. Now water was starting to fill the rest of the hull. It was going down even faster. The divers had very little time. I was swimming down towards where I could see John's boat was coming from. It was quite an unnerving sight, really. I could see John fighting to get the hatch open. When it didn't release, I was uh, horrified. And there, they're literally an inch, inch and a half away from you. You can almost touch them. They're obviously in dire straits and in need of your help. These, these guys had seconds, literally, to live. If we didn't release this hatch, we would have just watched them die. The adrenaline was starting to rise when we realized that these people just weren't going to come out easily. Time really did seem to stand still. It, it seemed every second was lasting a minute. We were taking too long to get these guys out. We really had to pull out all the stops and, and go for it. John eventually managed to open a crack and managed to get my fingers underneath. Even with our combined strength, it still took all our effort to open this thing. Adrenaline makes you do things that you probably wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. The door finally gave up. I managed to give it one hard pull and I made a grab for Mr. Pansini, who was obviously deeply unconscious. John dragged Panzini, still unconscious, to the surface, while Omar Boni made his own way up, struggling for air. I saw the sky, I saw the sun, I'm really happy and really lucky to be here. That shadow was really a good moment. I was really happy and really lucky. <coughs> when I got Panzini to the surface, his lips, earlobes were very blue. Now, he wasn't breathing. He was either very, very seriously ill, if not dead already, right up to the handover on the Christine. I, I did feel very shaky. Um, the emotions started to build up. When he first came out of the water, my impression was that we'd been too late. But obviously there was nothing we could do except go on at maximum speed. We put an airway down and um, blew his lungs with oxygen. They tried everything, including a device called an aspirator, which could suck out the huge quantities of water Panzini had swallowed. The Navy helicopter stood by to lift him to hospital. When you see helicopters lifting people off decks on telly, it looks very easy. Actually, it's a horrendously difficult thing to do. He gave a little cough and started to try to take one or two breaths. As he started to come round, he moved into a stage of, um, of partial consciousness when he was thrashing about. He had made decision the minute. There's no way he's going to the chopper like this unless he can be strapped down securely in that stretcher. If you're going to winch somebody off the deck of a boat into a helicopter, they've either got to be 
flat unconscious, or they've got to be totally cooperative. So we aborted the helicopter transfer and took him by sea to the harbour, which was only about eight minutes away. Yes, I'd been convinced that if I hadn't already died, I had only a few seconds to live. But it was wonderful to be alive and with others. We had noticed a freak wave when we made the turn. It just rolled the boat over and over. When we are in this position, you can see the sky, you can see the, the sun. After just a few seconds, the, the sky was uh, finished, and then the water, the level of the water, growing, growing, growing up. I was thinking about my children. I felt the will to live for them deep down inside. I saw like an angel with the wings to come uh, from the heaven out of the cockpit. Was the, everything blurred? An angel be become the diver was the diver of course. An angel opened the cockpit. I don't know how because we tried longer to, to open that bottom. It was terrible. It was really hard. Without them, it was impossible to go out from that cockpit. The crew of uh, Flying Christine, they save our life, my life and Francesco. Still going down. I feel I've witnessed a miracle. I was so close to death, yet I survived. I'm incredibly lucky to have been saved uh, by the doctor, uh, divers and all the team of the Flying Christine. I know they wouldn't have given up and let me die. This was the Flying Christine 2's last major rescue. In 30 years, she never lost a patient. Francisco Pansini said thank you to the crew of Flying Christine by making a donation for its replacement. And this is the new St. John Marine Ambulance, Flying Christine the third, of course. And with the very latest medical equipment and a special deck for easy access by divers and casualties, and with a top speed of more than 20 knots, she'll no doubt figure in many dramatic rescues of her own.